Yeah, and this plays, I think, exactly into what Jonathan was talking about, about, well, why the God of the Bible? Because the fact is, there is certain characteristics of the God of the Bible that are very interesting. The quick answer to this question is God does not need us to worship him. God is no better or no worse off if we don't. But here's the interesting thing. He wants us to. Now, what does that say about God? The creator of this complex universe wants us, invites us, not only to worship him, but to be in an intimate relationship with him. Now, there is an interesting characteristic that's unique within Christianity, if you study world religions, in the fact that the God of Christianity, the God of the Bible, is what we refer to as a trinity. The one being of God exists in three co-equal, co-eternal persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that these three have existed Co-equally and co-eternally in a set of living, loving relationships. Now, there's a philosophical problem that's referred to as the philosophical problem of love. <clears throat> because love requires a subject and an object. You don't wake up in the morning and love. It doesn't work like that. You love your spouse. You love pizza. You love your car. You love your parents. There's an object and a subject. But here's the interesting thing. God does not need to create to experience love. He has existed eternally in love. That's what John writes in 1 John. He says God is love. Because he's li- he has existed eternally in a set of living, loving relationships. Now that's unique to Christianity. That does not exist in other world religions. The God of Islam needs to create to experience love. Because a unitarian God, a God who is one in his being and one in his person, needs an object to experience that. So in one sense, the God of Islam is dependent on his creation in order to experience love. But the God of the Bible is not. The God of the Bible exists as love. Now, God is love. Love is not God. But God is love. And that's unique within Christianity and points to the fact that God does not need us to worship him. As I said before, he's no better off or no worse off if we don't. But he invites us to. He draws us to. He longs for us to be in that relationship. And I think that speaks volumes about these longings that we have internally for meaning, for morality, for destiny, for purpose. And I think that's where the longings of our heart speak to Not only the existence of a God, but the God of the Bible, who exists eternally as love and desires for you and I to be in that love, to be one as he is one, as Jesus says in John chapter 8.